Hello students. Today we will learn class 5 science chapter plants increasing the numbers. As you all know, plants give us fruits and vegetables, cereals and pulses, rubber, wood to make furniture and paper. Plants also help to reduce soil erosion by holding tightly the fertile soil with its roots. They also supply us with oxygen. So life on earth cannot exist without plants. That's why we need to grow more plants. Now, how can we grow more plants? See children, plants produce seeds so that we can grow new plants from seeds. And second option to grow new plants is from parts of the parent plant. So here we will learn how to grow new plants from seeds. For the same, see the picture of seeds. These are different types of seeds which can grow into new plants. Now let us learn types of seeds. First is monocot seed. It has only one seed leaf. See the picture of monocot seed. Now I will show you its parts. This is its seed coat. This is baby plant. And this is seed leaf. Now seed leaf is the food of baby plant. As long as baby plant does not grow green leaves, it depends on seed leaf. Examples of plants having monocot seed are wheat, maize and rice. Here you can see the picture of wheat, maize and rice seed also. Second type of seed is dicot seed. It has two seed leaves called cotyledons. See the picture of dicot seed and its parts. This is the seed coat. This is the baby plant and these are the two seed leaves called cotyledons. Here also this baby plant eats cotyledons to grow. Examples of plants having dicot seeds are gram, peas and beans. You can see the picture of gram, peas and beans also. Please note after soaking gram seed in water for few days, you can notice its parts also at home. Now we will learn about germination of seed. Let me show you its picture. When you sow a seed in soil, then the baby plant inside that seed has further two parts. One is root, which grows downward towards gravity. And the other is shoot, which grows upward towards sunlight. And this shoot grows further to a new plant. That's how a seed grows into a new plant. But children, please note that germination of seed cannot be possible without air, water and warmth of sunlight. Actually, germinating seed need air to breathe. Seed coat softens with the help of water and helps baby plant to break the seed open and come out. Further, cells of the seed need warmth of sunlight to become active. Please note that all the seeds are not grown into new plants. Because some seeds are eaten by animals or destroyed by strong winds or heavy rain. And sometimes they don't get favorable conditions like air, water and warmth. Now, before we will learn about dispersal of seeds, I want to show you something. See here, you can see a parent plant is taking sunlight water and minerals from roots for their growth. But if all the baby plants grow near the parent plant, not all would survive because 
they would not get enough sunlight, food, water and space to grow. So, there comes requirement of agents in nature to scatter the seeds away from their parent plant. Now, this process is called dispersal of seeds. Now, the agents of dispersal are wind, water, animals, explosion. Let us learn about the seeds which are dispersed by these agents one by one. Let us see the examples of seeds which are dispersed by wind. This is cotton seed. See its hair. This is dandelion seed. And this is its hair. You can see its hair. This is hiptage seed and see its wings. So hair and wings of these types of seeds help in dispersal of these seeds by wind. Our next agent is water. Here you can see lotus seed. See its porous part. Now this is coconut seed. See its fibrous coat. So porous part and fibrous coat of these seeds help in their dispersal by water. Now, let us know about seeds which are dispersed by animals. Have a look on the picture of xanthium seed and see its stiff hair. Now, tiger nail seed, see its hooks. And the third one is spear grass, see its spines. Now, sometimes humans and animals eat fruits and throw their seeds. These seeds, like I have shown you above, have hooks or spines which get stuck to the hairy skin of animals and are carried away. Sometimes birds also swallow these seeds which come out unchanged in their droppings. And now the last agent of dispersal of seeds that is explosion. There are some plants like pea pod. It bursts open and its seeds scattered near the parent plant to further grow into new plants. Now our topic of dispersal of seeds ends. As I have told you in first slide that there are two ways to grow new plants. One way I have told you in detail that is how new plants grow from seeds. Now the second way is to grow new plants from parts of the plant like here you can see stem. Stem cutting to grow new plants like here you can see stem of rose plant is used to grow new plant of rose. Second, sugarcane stem. It can also be used to grow new sugarcane plant. There are some vegetables also which can be grown into new plants. See, these are the three vegetables. Potato. Here is birds, onion and ginger. So these vegetables are having some parts with birds or eyes which can be cut and used to grow new plant. Now, as I am saying that new plants can be grown from other parts of plant um, and that part can be its stem, its birds, its roots also, okay, and its leaves also. Let us see how roots and leaves are responsible for growth of new plants. new plants from roots. Now I am showing you the examples like sweet potato. Can you see here these are roots and these roots can be used to grow new plants or carrot. Carrot is also a root 
and it can be used to further grow into new plants. Besides stem, buds and roots, there are some leaves like bryophyllum. Its leaves are having some leaf buds which help in the growth of new plants. Now we have studied the ways to grow new plants from seeds as well as parts of the parent plant. Now let us learn about types of crops. Now children, you must know what are crops. Crops means plants of one kind grown in a particular area during a particular time. There are two types of crops, Rabi crops and Kharif crops. Rabi crops grown in winter season, that is from November to April. And examples of Rabi crops are wheat and gram. You can see the picture of wheat. This is wheat and this is gram. Okay. Now, now we will see Kharif crops. Kharif crops are grown in summer season, that is from June to October. The examples of Kharif crops are rice, maize, jawar, and bajra. You can see the picture of rice. This is rice and this is maize. Now I have told you that there are two types of crops, rabi crops and kharif crops. Now we will learn about types of vegetables. Some vegetables grow in winter season and some in summer season. Examples of vegetables of winter season are cabbage, cauliflower, radish, bean and pea. Here you can see the picture of cabbage, cauliflower, radish and peas. Now examples of vegetables of summer season are brinjal, pumpkin and gourd. Here you can see brinjal, pumpkin and gourd. Now these crops and vegetables about which we have studied grow in certain types of soil. These soil can be clay soil. This is clay soil, okay. Sandy soil, black soil. This is black in color, this is black soil, moist soil and dry soil. Now, in clay soil, rice and jute crops can grow. This soil can hold plenty of water. In sandy soil, wheat crops in Punjab and UP, Jawar and Bajra crops in Rajasthan, grow. You can also grow onion and groundnut in sandy and dry soil. In black soil, cotton crops are grown, especially in central and western India. In moist soil, tea crops are grown in Assam, Nilgiris and Darjeeling. In dry soil, maize can be grown in plains or hilly areas. So as you see that different types of crops can be grown in different types of soil. To grow crops and vegetables, there should be good agriculture. Agriculture means practice of growing plants on large scale. Children, are you looking at this picture? See, these crops are looking so beautiful and healthy. But for the same, a farmer works hard a lot. He uses healthy and ripe seeds for sowing, like this. Then he prepared the soil properly. Here you can see the soil preparation. Then he add manures and fertilizers to the soil to provide it with nutrients like nitrogen or something. So, this is how he adds manures and fertilizers to the soil.
Here you can see in the picture. Then he irrigates the soil with water. See, like this. Now he also uses insecticides and pesticides to protect the crops from being destroyed by insects or pests. Like this. So have you seen good agriculture can give you good crops? Now, when you get the crops, then its protection is very, very, very important. And the seeds coming out from fruits and vegetables are also required to be stored in airtight containers. But you can see in this picture that buffaloes are destroying the crops. And for the same, a farmer should use fences like this to stop big animals from destroying the crops. Similarly, you can see insects are destroying the leaves. That's why it is necessary to use insecticides like this. Now, it is very necessary to kill these insects and save the plants. Here you can see the seeds and grains of various plants. Maize is also there. Pulses are there. Now after harvesting, grain are also required to be protected against moisture. Okay, like against rats, moles, birds, squirrels, insects, they can destroy your grains after harvesting. So they must be kept in airtight sealed containers. Now I think we have completed this chapter. Let us recall what we have learned. Now, how we get new plants from seeds? And seeds can be of two types, monocot seed and dicot seed. Second topic was germination of seeds. That is, seed needs air, water and warmth of sunlight to germinate. Otherwise, seed cannot be germinated successfully. Third is about agents of dispersal of seeds. They are wind, water, animal and explosion. Fourth was how do we get new plants from other parts of plant like stem, part with birds, roots, leaf birds. We have also learnt about types of soil that is clay soil, sandy soil, black soil, moist soil, dry soil. And last but not the least, we have also learnt steps to be taken for agriculture. Like proper irrigation should be there, insecticides and pesticides should be sprayed, manures and fertilizers should be used to give nutrition to soil and how to protect crops against insects to keep them in airtight containers. So at last I want to say that if you like my video then please press the like button and thanks for watching my video. Thank you.